Dr. Hopper, you used it in treating alcoholism. Uh, why do you use it for that purpose? In my opinion, Mr. Burton, and this is based upon 500 cases that we have treated over the past eight years, uh, we selected alcoholics because it is often easier to know whether they are improved or not. And many of our people had not responded to the best treatment that we could give them. And they are now sober and good people. Mm. We began to use uh, LSD to treat alcoholics. The original idea was to use it as a drug. Give them LSD, give them a terrible time and hope that they would therefore not want to drink anymore. It didn't work that way at all. Alcoholics uh, tended to be very tolerant of their own uh, uh, shortcomings and uh, they rather like not to think about this. The great advantage with, with um, one of the hallucinogens is that you could make them very well aware of this and it might alter sometimes change their behavior. They might see it in, in a quite different light. They gave the first LSD to the alcoholics and after they had given it to five or six or seven, Humphrey says, you know, he said, it's not working. I said, what do you mean? He says, we can't give them this terrible time they're supposed to have. I said, what's happening? He said, it's something different. And he began to describe what was happening. He was describing a psychedelic experience. Under uh, LSD, some of them sometimes would get the idea that perhaps they really were mistreating their, their own kin. And uh, that is a powerful uh, uh, incentive to do something about it. It's not thought to be a good idea to uh, persecute your own family unless the family likes it. And presumably, if they took a, a, a dim view of your drinking, they didn't like it. These experiments have helped us to experience something of how these ill people perceive the world, its dimensions of time, space, and color. Humphrey gave me LSD, and I learned the secret of his success. It's all on the inside. It's uh, just looking for you. <laughs> if you don't really understand the spiritual basis of man and you're not open to it, you're missing one of the greatest contributions that LSD can make. Well, Hubbard came along and um, demonstrated a whole new way of using it based on spiritual realization. Captain Alfred M. Hubbard was born into a poor Kentucky family in 1902. Eccentric and charismatic, he grew up to make his fortune as a pilot, an inventor, and an entrepreneur. After some of his darker dealings got him into trouble with U.S. authorities during World War II, he moved to an island off the coast of British Columbia. Hubbard believed that if the right individuals were exposed to it, LSD could save the world. He set about on his mission to turn on the captains of industry and the princes of the church. In a good LSD experience, what happens is that as you resolve your inner conflicts and the loads and the barriers that are developed, and you begin to reach down into the depths of your own being, you see more and more levels of being, more and more levels of understanding. Often we like to blame our feelings on other people and what they're doing to us. But if I feel it, it's my feeling. 
and I have produced it, and I'm the only one that can resolve it. And fortunately, these substances allow you to see and recognize this and resolve it. Meeting Hubbard was one of the most remarkable things that ever happened to me. Maybe not as effective as taking LSD, but he was so different than anyone I'd ever met. But the thing about him that um, was also very different was he radiated an energy that I could feel. I don't think ever before in my life I'd ever felt anyone. But I could feel his energy, and I just felt so good in his presence. He had a religious vision that he was uh, working on behalf of the uh, the Virgin Mother, and uh, giving people the key to the the religious universe, you know. And he only half believed in himself. But he was the most unlikely man to be on a religious mission that you could possibly imagine. He has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. He gave me a little method dream, which is a nice euphoria. So it left me with very good feelings about Al Hubbard, and uh, I was pretty convinced that I needed to go and try uh, LSD with him. So I made a date and went up to Canada. I was just astounded at what I learned, and I felt enormously free from the way I had before. And then I just couldn't get over such a profound learning experience. So naturally, I became very enthused about it. I started talking to people about it and encouraging others and began to wonder how I could get more and more involved. We set up the foundation in Menlo Park and we had got a lot of help from Al. Uh, we formed a corporation. Uh, Hoffer and Osmond uh, were on the board of directors. I was not uh, uh, interested in uh, extremely objective uh, evidence. He was interested in the evidence he liked, which uh, is very human and, and um, understandable. He lacked any uh, any sort of credence because he didn't have the, the customary training. And uh, people just sort of poo-pooed him as a wild man, but he, uh, he was some wild man. <laughs> I only met him once. It was very amusing. He came for lunch, a very, a very busy man, and he came with uh, some apparatus. The apparatus was to get, uh, give himself some CO2, I think. And after lunch, he took his doses of CO2, <laughs> and then he was happy, and then he left. <laughs> That's the only time I met him. Very extraordinary type. All those would be fascinated by a person like that. Oh, yes. Whether one makes contact with Aldous Huxley through his writing or in personal conversation, the impression that comes almost immediately is that of a uniquely versatile, omnivorous intellect, constantly searching and probing with a clean, cold incisiveness. All the zoological values from somewhere. And through that, I got to know him. He was a very nice person to me. First, he made, uh, at his best, an excellent conversationalist, and immensely learned, and very good-natured. And, of course, he, um, uh, he was practically no subject. He didn't know uh, a, a lot more about it than I did, so I was very impressed by this. The start of the Second World War found